lecture series got it so you know um, I, as, as i already told this branch was started in 17 and since there were so many many events so now i request uh, mr amit no he's a, um, a secretary of the site Eastern branch chapter mtts so amit yes sir please introduce please introduce and dr somak yes sir hello everybody so uh, I welcome you for the today's webinar. Uh, on behalf of MTTS Chapter Triple I Team Jabalpur Fraternity, I would like to thank for joining us today's webinar on electromagnetic characterization of samples at high frequencies by Dr. Sumak Bhattacharya from IIT BHU, Varanasi. Currently, he is an assistant professor in the Department of Electronics Engineering, IIT BHU. He has received honors in physics from Scottish Church College, Kolkata in 2003 in sequence he has completed BTEC and MTEC degree from Institute of Radio Physics and Electronics in University of Calcutta in 2006 and 2008, respectively. He has received his PhD degree from IIT Kanpur in 2015. He is, he is recipient of many prestigious awards. He has been honored with Young Scientist Award by International Union of Radio Sciences three times. He is fellow member of IETE, Associate of West Bengal, Academy of Science and Technology, and Life Fellow member of the Optical Society of India. Now I request to Maksha to please start the webinar, sir. Okay, so thank you very much. Am I audible perfectly? Yes, sir, you're perfectly yes, audible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't uh, share my screen that. Uh, yes, sir, I'm giving you the permission to share the screen. Wait for a minute. Sir, I have made you the host, so so now you can share the screen. But I request okay. you to uh, at the before uh, closing the ceremony, you please share the host per authority to me at the end of the session. Okay, so okay, so please please let me know that how I have to do that, so I will do it. Okay, sir. Yeah. So just I'm sharing my screen. Just let me know once you can see my screen. Yes, sir. It's visible. It's visible. Okay, and uh, I am going to just one minute. Yeah, is, is it visible in full screen mode? Yes, sir. It yes, is yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, but, but I am getting the one that someone is coming and uh, oh. is joining this one. So, will it be feasible that to give the because I am getting that every time that yeah people are knocking me in. That, yes, sir. Uh, since is... I have uh, since I have made you the host, so now you have to allow them to enter. Okay, the okay. Session. So, so that so uh, can I make you also host? Is, is it yes. possible? Yes, sir. You can make me host now. So, so, so uh, Amit, so, yes. Amit, it is better to I think you act as a host, or you can okay, just sir. give the permission to share the slides. So, much, sir, uh, now if you transfer Otherwise, me, many uh, many participants will disturb him, right? Yeah, yeah, so I mean, you tell me that how I can make you host. Where? Sir, uh, uh, can you see my name there uh, on the screen in the uh, in the screen. in the participants, Amit Sharma or I Triple E STD? Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that that I can see. Yes, sir. If you can see I Triple E student branch, then you can share yeah. it here. Uh, in the uh, if you click in the options, there will be an option of make host. If you click there, uh, where in the participant list? Yes, sir. In the participant list, you will see I Triple E student branch Triple E TDM. So That's there, uh, you will see an option of making them oh, host. Okay. Then uh, I will get the permission. Know, just one minute. I am getting the options. Yeah. Just one second. Yeah. I am getting the options over here. Chat. Ask to start video. Pin. Acha. Then. Acha. Just one minute. Okay. Sorry. Make host, no? okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, okay? yes, sir. Now, now it's okay? okay, and I'm able to accept uh, all the entries. Now you can and, continue, uh, sir. And, and and you can see my screen in full screen mode. Right? I can I can see all the screens. Participant can share. So is the laser pointer visible in the screen? Yes, sir. It's the pointer okay. is visible. Okay. 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 So good afternoon to all of you. And thank you very much for the invitation from 
IEEE student run chapter for IEEE Jabalpur for inviting me for this presentation. So I am uh, Shumak Bhattacharya going to talk about today about the electromagnetic characterization of samples at high frequencies. So uh, well, by, the, by the way, let me ask you one thing. So will the questions Hello? be considered at the end or it will be in between also? Hello? Hello? Adi sir. Huh. Yes, sir. Uh, such yeah. questions uh, questions will can it, be will, will it be considered at the end or in between also the this will be considered? The questions will be at the end of the session. Uh, okay. Okay. So they will I, write on the chat box. If there's any query, they will write on the chat box. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. So yeah, so I'm sorry for getting delayed. So what I am just going to tell you today about the electromagnetic characterization of samples at high frequencies. So first, let me just tell you what do we mean by a, a high frequency or what is the basic communication? Well, that let me think about, let me start from a very basic communication system, you know, that you need a source by default and which will be the message signal will be transmitted by having the suitable modulation scheme after which which has been transmitted by using a transmission medium and destination okay now in a communication system you know that uh, these are the basic figure of merits like the signal the noise ratio of the channel capacity, which can be governed by Shannon law, where B is the available bandwidth, C equal to B log 2, 1 plus SNR U. And also the noise figure in the system, that is the ratio between input to output signal to noise ratio. Okay, so these are the forward that let me come to the high frequency so mostly about the high frequencies we will you know that constant as part of the millimeter wave domain also this microwave you know that if we consider the entire microwave frequency band the crudely the original definition was three one millimeter okay and here it will have several applications like mobile communication, astronomy also in the particular communication. And I will say about some kind of, you know, of the measurements and so I will say that in microwave frequency, some of the measurements of samples that also I will talk about. In between the two, we are having and optical domain starts at 30 terahertz. So in between the two, what you can have that we will, uh, we can think of that well, that uh, accordingly we can design our system, okay, and uh, go forward. Uh, wireless communication, if we uh, think from an historical point of view, so these three gentlemen are the, you know, that they are the pioneers in the domain of wireless communication. Then the, uh, the, the pioneers that wireless communication or wireless research, Jagadish Chandra Bose, okay. And also that who has basically shown or demonstrated a short distance communication at, mic, at the high, very high frequencies. Funny that uh, who backed the Nobel Prize in 1920, while he has demonstrated this video. Okay, so here I am showing you the demonstration of wireless by impact by uh, here you can see Jagadish Chandra Bose. So he is demonstrating the experiment. Okay, what 
I have carried out this work, mostly in Presidency College, Kolkata, as well as the, you know, that what is known as the Bose Institute in Kolkata nowadays. So he had carried out everything over there. So he has used all those ones because all the equipments, okay, whatever he has used, so that has been, you know, that has been, I, Share by his own, okay, and accordingly he has come up with the setup, this particular setup. And uh, on the other hand, when Marconi had done, communication in 19 in those days. So here, so you just think of in 1890s in that particular. Most time that India was not politically independent. And still, he was invited at the prestigious Royal Institution in London. Eighteen ninety-seven at Royal Institution, London. Okay. So, after exactly after hundred years, you can see that here I am just showing you a snapshot. In the part of the, you know, that this is considered as the toughest conferences in this particular area, where you know that still date the acceptance rate is not more than 30 percent. of millimeter wave research, and you can read the abstract, what has been written just carried out in Calcutta at millimeter wavelengths. He used waveguides, horn antennas, dielectric lenses, various polarizers and even and some concepts from his original 1897 papers have been incorporated into a new 1.3 millimeter multi-beam receiver now in use on the NRAO 12 meter telescope. Just to think of, think his legacy that I want to say something around 125 years ago. And even after few years of this particular and line of this one, US agency, this US agency is nothing but IEEE, which honors the works of India on this particular scientific achievements and so, okay? And you can see the plate which was handed over over there that you can see the title of this one was first millimeter wave communication experiments by jesse bose initiated at presidency college calcutta india transmission and reception of electromagnetic waves at 60 gigahertz over a distance of 23 meters through two intervening walls by remotely ringing a bell and detonating gunpowder for this communication system was developed entire millimeter wave components such as a spark transmitter, Pohara dielectric lens, polarizer, horn antennas, and cylindrical diffraction rating. And this was handed over to the authority in September 2012. So just to think of that, uh, you know, that how how much, you know, that the, the, you know, the volume of the contribution. And later, yeah, in fact, Radio astronomical applications as well as some kind of observations. So, what is that one? If you see our electromagnetic spectrum and where the wavelength is increasing on the right side, see high frequencies, the atmosphere is opaque in nature, while at the lower one, the ionosphere offers opacity, right? Now, in between the two, if you can see over here, you are having an optical window, and there are several smaller windows. In you can have having some kind of transparency over a wider width in the microwave frequency domain, not in the RF. Okay, at the microwave frequencies. Accordingly, what is happening? You can see over here. So you can think.
started long back in 1930s as an offshoot of the developments in radio communication technology. I will come to this one very soon that how uh, this has You can see that you know some of the objects at various frequencies. You can see that the nebula, these you know that, or the some kind of you know that sky, gamma ray, or some other objects. So whatever you are studying, so basically what you have to do that you are making some kind of imaging at high frequencies. Okay. So once you are doing the imaging, so what you are doing that basically you know for example in our in our eye also that when And whenever this reaches our eye, you know that it is forming some kind of image. Some kind of visible kind of imaging. Okay. Now, here the story that what I was just telling you just few minutes ago, that well, There was a scientist, his name was uh, Karl Jansky, who it was working in Bill Lab in USA, and he was a radio, you know, he was a uh, communic radio communication engineer and went to the field for making some certain observations. And what he has found out that apart from the, you know, that apart from the measurements or wherever they are expected, he was receiving some kind of peaks at some regular interval of time. <laughs> as, Yeah, he was receiving some peaks at some regular interval of time, as you can see. Now, what is happening that he was receiving this one from a rotating star like this way. So from this star, from the, you know, that from the one end of the star, you are getting some kind of emission. So some coming back over here, again, you are receiving the emission and so on. Okay, so uh, like that way, this one is going on. So what is doing that he is receiving the signal of a certain interval of time. Okay. And later on, that due to his contribution, this Jansky has become, you know, that one of the unit in radio astronomical observation. And his name is known as the, or he's called as the father of radio astronomical, you know, observation or father of radio astronomy. Okay. Now later. That went what significantly in, nine, in the mid 1960s or end 1960s to make the imaging at some radio wavelengths, okay, of some distant star. And what you can see that here, it, okay, you will uh, you will understand it, okay. I will explain this figure later. And this person is no other than Professor Minalka. Is Professor M. K. Dasgupta, who had started in fact this telescope, whatever I'm showing it over here, or this antenna, this was used in the you know the microwave wavelengths, and this was you know that is located in Manchester in UK. Okay. And well, Professor Dasgupta, he was hailing from University of Calcutta, Department of Radio Physics and Electronics, so standing or sitting. For beautiful images. Okay. Now, working at other wavelengths, you can see that the, some of the telescopes in the UV range or some of the Hubble telescope, which is launched in state of things. I'm showing it over here. Now, once I'm talking of the radio telescope in the micro, which is operating in the microwave wavelength, so this is nothing but a modified version of it. Okay. You know that it has been the signal has been received in some polarization. And then undergo certain, you know, that certain process so that it will be recovered and you know the baseband signal can be achieved. Okay. So you know this was functional in the last year, situated in Puerto Rico, and later the for in fact.
this antenna it is connected by several cables and these cables were you know it has become non functional and hence that this is becoming completely non functional after the second cable break okay so yes so unfortunately we lost this particular you know that this particular setup okay after working for after being functional for more than 40 years or so okay in india also that uh, the uti radio telescope or over the snapshot some of the snapshot of that particular telescope now i am coming we are making the you know that imaging of the object okay you know that resolution we can define it as no that is not mechanically feasible so what is the way out the way out is array antenna right so you can make then array air that gets enhanced or resolution of the signal that gets by having an improved resolution of an array antenna but yes is more is much more improved but yes many of his observed many of the you know that details have been uh, have repeat once we are having that you know that array antenna simulations or array antenna measurements okay now if i go back to the uh, one where i have left out so here comes that another interesting thing well suppose you have made an array antenna over uh, where the antenna baseline is having like this kind of straight line now well the earth is also rotating at one time it is offering the you know this much baseline at one time this line on this one this one so what is happening having the resolution power it will become a function of time but so resolution power okay over the time so what is the way out the way out is if you can make a circular area okay so that then this can be covered so what how you can do that by making the optimized one you can make basically if you can make a light if the circumference of it will cover or will constitute the circle right and this is the minimum number of elements you can use over here okay of the analogy is that when if you are having that for example you can think of that we are having in our ceiling fan there are three blades okay and they are lying or making a circumference of a but in saying that well these are some of the radio telescopes okay that which basically goes with or basically use the array antenna okay and uh, later yes in india there is one facility where i had worked with in my masters this known as gmrt or Jack are located some Uh, suggest you okay that once the situation will be a bit better please visit this particular facility okay so this is a world class facility academics especially i am telling it to the students okay please visit this particular facility instrumental for making this particular facility is known as the father of indian radio astronomy okay his contribution is immense okay 
and uh, uh, his in fact i am telling you that on his uh, his the 19 okay, i will tell the students that in your spare time please read this article you will be hugely motivated i believe so okay just you read the you know the title and if you can see the abstract in this paper we pay a tribute to the father of indian radio astronomy professor gobind saru bsc msc phd frs by celebrating his 90th birthday which occurred on 23rd march 2009 australia and the united states of america so in this case i i want to just tell you a very small thing that from stanford university in us you people know what stanford university advisor advisor of prime minister of india is no other than dr bhumi jahangir bhava he with that particular you know invitation he came over here came back in india and established this particular you know that uh, this great setup i would say that you must uh, go over there and uh, please see that particular facility you will i i I, I believe that to see the facility, and yes, I also consider myself fortunate to come across with Professor Shorup in number of ways. I can show you some of my memories over here. Center for Radio Astronomy in Pune in 2013. This is in his home in 2016, and yes, uh, in 2009. time during the inauguration of rc asia pacific radio science congress okay and yes he couldn't observe it 2020 and in november 2020 this has been bad time and it's really raman this is a third facility from india or third thing from india i should say at the newspaper cuttings and you can see the plate over here the gmrt consisting of 30 antennas of 45 meter diameter each spanning 25 km near pune india is one of the largest and most sensitive low frequency working in 110 to 460 megahertz radio telescopes in the world it pioneered new techniques in antenna design receiver systems and signal transport over optic fiber gmrt has produced important discoveries in So you can see that we are making the the, the imaging of this. So you see, well, that the appearance is different in the four distinct cases. Okay, so it is very important, you know, to find out the emission. It is basically available or detected at a particular wavelength. So hence, you you need the or you have to do the imaging at all the wavelengths. Okay. Okay, you can see at all the frequency spectra. Okay, and what you can find there is no correlation at all between one frequency domain to another one. Okay, and hence you. You should do it in all the frequencies so that you can make a final conclusion of it. Okay. GMRT. I will come to. I am gradually. I am entering into more into the technical ones. Well. so that is known as wavelength division multiplexing on wdm so in technics i believe i am not going into details so what you are having well you can consider just i'm going with three lasers simply and they are non overlapping in nature their spectrum are non overlapping okay now 
propagate over the same optical fiber and at the output end in the DMR duplex in the receiving end accordingly. Okay. And another interesting thing is suppose you are having an optical fiber link over here, you can simultaneously transmit a wavelength of lambda one from left. The wavelength of lambda two from left from right to left side, provided the spectrum of lambda one and lambda two are not non-overlapping. So this means that WDM or wavelength division multiplexing that supports the bidirectional transmission. Two different wavelengths and or two different polarizations. It's a multiplexer, and this is the photodetector circuitry. Okay, that means basically generates or basically detects the electrical. Making it well. This is the system in the uh, that how the the front end system in GMRT works. So what is happening whenever the signal has. That the overall noise figure I can write F1 plus F2 minus 1 by G1 plus F3 minus. With no noise figure, with low noise figure, or low noise, simple low noise amplifier, then the overall noise figure of the system is the minimum one, right? So what is happening? The signal has been received. You can see LHCP, RCP, and they have been allowed to propagate around, around the two, you know, the two or the two uh, That is nothing but the power has been divided one by two, one by two, okay? And half of the power have been again And accordingly, you are employing some kind of WDM system so that it will propagate from the, you know, from the transmitter side to the receiver side. You are in, okay, you are employing the ORX or the receiver, optical receiver so that the signals can be separated out in the two orthogonal polarization, LACP and RACP. Now, well, one thing is. First of all, the system should allow the telemetry at 1300 nanometer. Okay. And another thing is that there should so to support the system, you can see that well from transmission provided they are operating at different wavelengths or different frequencies this particular you know that particular uh, feature is basically clear from uh, this particular figure okay this is the block diagram of this one okay i can show you another uh, i can tell you another important thing that once you are allowing the signal to propagate now you know that we consider that all the components are linear in nature right but in practice they are non-linear right If you choose two frequencies, F1 and F2, suppose you are feeding it to a mixer or to an amplifier, okay? Now what will happen, although it is linear, but in practice, since it is a non, it is offers non-linearity, so you are having the higher order harmonics. Suppose the, the maximum damage is the, third, is the third order harmonic. And third order harmonic is basically, if you can say that F1, 
frequencies which are extremely close to each other, then 2f1 minus f2 or 2f2 minus f1, there that will cause the maximum effect. And you can see that will follow this particular path which were for the ratio between in R. Um, this particular slope. So what you are having in this case that you are having, you know, that these two graphs will intercept at some point. I am giving you a simple example. Well, you are having suppose this particular, uh, you know, that this particular measurement setup you have made that here you are generating two frequencies, 500 megahertz and 500. One minus p by two p by two power is coming. It is a nonlinear system, and if I can compute that we have one minus f ninety nine megahertz, while the other one will be five hundred two megahertz, right? And this has been allowed to. In the as ORX or the optical receiver, and then. Spectrum analyzer. Now, once you will see the spectrum, you can see these two are the coming up, okay? And uh, accordingly, they will increase very soon. Now, from the data, what you can do well. You can measure the data and what. Where both the graphs are meeting, and you can say, well, that is the third order intercept point or IP3 point. Idea is you should operate much below to this particular power, okay, so that your, uh, you know, so that your system will not undergo any kind of damage. Now, as the RF signal that is getting propagated over a lot larger distance by having, you know, that this particular communication system, you can see that, well, here we are doing some kind of experiment. So, by the way, this is me. This was me. 2008, that I'm doing some experiment in the W4 antenna of GMRT, something around 50 to 16 kilometer away from, you know, from the main, from the center. So what you can see that well, you have transmitted some signal, and you can receive it in the uh, in the you know that in the from in the uh, uh, at the desired location. Megahertz, and here at 504 megahertz, that is that is a, a small off, uh, offshoot of frequency. Here it reaches the noise level. Okay, so what you can do that one can show that well at 500 megahertz. Kind of technique where you can basically verify that you can uh, do some certain uh, you can allow certain propagation over a particular distance. Okay, so before I move on to the next slide, I want that if there is any question, I can uh, so what to you, the organizers. Hello, hello, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, I ask uh, if anybody have any question regarding the presentation. Yes, sir, you continue, please. Okay. Well, now I will come to much more, you know, state for the character. Whenever we are the electromagnetic engineers, we try to characterize any system. We can talk of in the language of electromagnetics, we can be need a properties like three of the major properties. One is the permittivity, second one is the permeability, and 
the third one is the contact key. Okay, so here you know, suppose. One of the properties will undergo change. And you know, from circuit point of view, there will be reflection, right? And that will follow that if the mismatch is there, so there will be from, from transmission line concept you can think of, there will be the formation of the standing wheels, right? So here you can see, well, you are having some. find out the you know the characteristic properties of this particular object okay what i can tell next that well here it is one of the techniques i we are showing that to retrieve the electrical and physical property the two mediums medium one and three they are identical which is nothing but free space medium two you can think This is you know that one medium under test, and you are you think like this way. Well, some wave is incident from this side, which is wave number number one. Okay, and this one wave it will having the part two that will be transmitted toward the medium two, while the wave three that is undergoing reflection, right? Now, whatever the two is incident in this, or two is transmitted to the through the material under. Medium the interface between medium two and medium three, and come number five. Again, you are having in receive over here in this side. You can name them as PR one, PR two, or PR three. Okay. So what you can do that you can think of well that PR one, PR two, PR three. If you want to do certain mathematics, you can. Find it very easily that by doing certain calculations, that well, they have been functions. Or attenuation coefficient B is the thickness between of the particular medium, and gamma, capital gamma, it is the reflection coefficient. Okay, between medium. So once you are having this, well. Show in this particular expression, okay, and accordingly you can compute gamma in terms of the PR one, PR two, PR three, from which you can compute the relative permittivity of the medium epsilon r and thickness of the sample d, and also you can retrieve the other parameters like alpha, the attenuation coefficient, the conductivity, okay, or the dielectric loss tan delta, okay. I am showing you over here the flow chart, or you know that the one which uh, one can follow to make a time domain. So the second peak it is appearing at the time that you can see over here. This T one is the first, the occurrence of the first time. So you can one can uh, show that if the medium is non-magnetic in nature, you can find it over here. So what basically you can do that well, you are having the uh, the you know that you are. You have to convert it into time domain, and according in the time domain, you have to compute the values that the powers and the occurrence of times. Okay, and from that you have to compute the base peak timing as well as the PR three that is the power which is receiving. You have to follow the resolution, the range resolution. It is limited by the bandwidth of the system. Okay, that is the that is one of the important aspects. Okay, so here, really a sample. Okay, having the relative fun doing the measurement in time domain. Suppose you are getting this kind of you know that.
you can get that well if sin on r is 6.498 very close to the original value 5.5 uh, millimeter so that is also very close to the original value right now if you change the thickness of the material okay so you can think like this way if i change the thickness the occurrence of the first peak that will not change however the occurrence of pr2 or pr3 that will change the second and third peak timing that undergoes change or rather they are increasing right since the thickness gets enhanced okay you can follow this for in fact that whatever i have shown it for berylia you can do it the same thing for other samples also so so this has been some samples which have been standard materials which are available in cst microwave studio you can hear and you can see the error you know the percentage error is very small for all these cases okay so with this what you can do well you can what you can want to the material on the test over here and from one antenna you know you are using a couple of antennas identical antennas which are you know identical in nature okay so one of the horn antennas is transmitting a signal which is intercepted by the material on the test and the signal has been reflected by and received by the receiving antenna okay so this is basically you can see the s11 of the material under test okay you can think like that way for even measuring in the nepar analyzer you have to measure the s21 this is very important okay and you can see that you are using two samples one is a red granite marble of 2.3 mm thickness and another one is 2.8 mm thickness of the you know that the uh, some kind of unknown sample now what you are doing once you are doing the measurements you can find out the and find out over here you are getting the peaks in time domain so what you can do you can find the frequency over here frequency domain response you and accordingly what you can do you can find out or you can compute that what is the what are the frequency values of the epsilon r and d so what you can do that well 6.587 it is coming out instead of 6.5 and 2.3 is is computed as 2.3 5 and this one has 2.74 so this is also in, in you know they're very close okay so these are the first attempt that what we have made okay and what i can show tell you the whenever you are doing it experimentally the error in more to that you know there are number of maybe some kind of you know that uh, uh, which cannot be some kind of uncontrolled scattering diffraction and so on okay next one also that we are showing Transmission with an angle of transmission and angle of accordingly, what you can do then you know that you can write certain equations which are very simple in nature. If you are more interested, you can go through the publication what we are. I am just giving at the bottom of this uh, you know slide. So what you can do that well, these are some again you are. will compute this you know that epsilon r and mu are by making certain steps okay i am not going into much you can also you can go through this particular paper okay with doing it taking a observing the algorithm okay one can determine the reconstructed value the relative permittivity permeability
critical one so that the reconstruction can occur much be, in a much better way okay also you can do it for other samples also i am not going into much details okay and then you are again coming to the uh, experimental set uh, this has been done for the normal incidence and this is for the oblique incidence again the same way with the same samples under test okay and what you can find out from the you know from uh, the normal incidence and the oblique incidence plots you can compute the values of epsilon mu r and d and what you can find out this is that well 6.5 so you are getting 6.65 okay this is 1.02 okay thickness is 2.17 Also, you are getting, you know, quite. In fact, this is a, in fact, it's a quite close proximity. What we had, what we had obtained, whenever we are going for. Much more, you know, that uh, much more importance. Ah uh, well. Whatever you can do the measurements that by using PNA, you can also now this is another one for DNA or the vector network analyzer, which is extremely important for doing certain examples. For example, in an anechoic chamber, okay, where you are having this kind of pyramidal homes to absorb frequency over a wide range, you can do the experimental measurements of any kind of you know electromagnetic character. In DNA. So what you are doing? The sample has been put over here, and the transmitter and receiver they are at the same location. You can see like this way, and connected to a vector network analyzer. And this sort of phone antennas, okay. And the sample has been put it over here. So wave is transmitted from transmit. Okay, within the anechoic chamber itself. Now here, what you can do that once you are doing it and you are putting the absorber over here, this absorber is nothing but you know, uh, you know, this is a dual band absorption. Okay. By using the VNA. Then you put a very large metallic sheet. Okay, because why? If you put a very large metallic sheet, there will not be any side edge reflection or scattering. Number two, metal is a perfect reflector. So whatever the wave is interpreted, that will be reflected back. Basically, exhibiting some kind of identical responses. Once you are having it, well, then you can compute the actual reflection by absorbing surface over there. So the difference between the two will provide you what is the actual reflection from the structure. Okay. Now what is happening? That well, if you are having that a medium like this way, you know a part of the wave which has been incident that will be reflected back and a part of the wave will get it transmitted back and in microwave or in, in high frequency i can see that as if you are having a complete metallic this way one minus mod s one one square with where s one one is the Coefficient of the material under test, you can compute what is the absorption or absorptivity of that particular sample. Okay, so then you can compare with the simulated response and accordingly comment. Well, now this one I am telling you that this can be uh, applied for some kind of nano composite based materials. So what you are doing? First, you are putting some.
some composite coatings for which you want to measure the absorption coefficient. So what you are doing, this is the, you know, that 